Okie dokie. Hello, hello, everybody. How are you? This is your weekly weather report for Monday, the week of Monday, March 21st. Happy Equinox. And it's the first day of spring here in the Northern Hemisphere, first day of fall in the Southern Hemisphere. So wherever you are in the world, Yay, it's a, new, it's a new season, and I'm so happy to be here with you. For those of you who have just joined the Actualization Zone, I am your host. I am a psychologist by training. I am an intuitive channel. And one of the things that I wanted to do with this new Facebook group is to just tune into the non-physical energies the emotions, kind of the, the things that I'm seeing and noticing going on in the world and bring them to you for your consideration. Maybe some of the things that I notice can support you as well as you are going about your week. So this is an opportunity on Mondays always to set our intentions and to set the tone for a good week, a productive week, a week that's aligned with your most deeply held hopes and dreams and to start leaning in and actualizing those hopes and dreams. You know what I always say, the best way to actualize your hopes and dreams is to become the version of yourself that's already experienced those things. So today is my contribution to you to just let you know what I'm seeing and noticing going on in the energy uh, in the world and to share with you some of my observations and some of my own lessons. I have been considered a role model since I was a little girl. I'm the oldest of my four siblings, and it's just is something that I've always done. So maybe you can learn a few things from my experiences so you don't have to also repeat my experiences as well. My husband and I were in Sedona this last weekend to kind of just take some time away from home, take some time away from the office, from work uh, to reset. I always say Sedona is always a good idea, and this was no exception. We hiked. One day, we found my very favorite, I have a very, very favorite sacred, very secret trail in one of the canyons in Sedona. And when I go there, the, the path up through the, through the canyon actually rides along the canyon wall. And you can just follow that footpath all the way up and around and around and up, 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 very, very high onto the canyon wall. And it opens up into this vista that's an amazing view, first of all. But I always feel like when I'm there, like I'm, I've arrived home at the mothership. There's just this really settled, nurturing, strong energy that sits up there. And I just love, I could lay there forever. So we did that. And... We've been up there a couple of different times, but if you're not careful when you're hiking on more like foot trails or deer trails, you can lose your way down. Now we didn't get lost, but we did miss our down. So we ended up going quite a bit out of our way to come back around and we finally made the decision to just return where we came from and to find our down again. It was such a good lesson though because we kept on trying to, from these very high elevations, trying to find a way down that was, you know, it was pretty gnarly up there, to be quite honest. There were lots of brambles and lots of branches, and I don't, I don't enjoy bushwhacking at all. I like to stay on trails, even if they're just small trails. I like to see the, the flow of where a trail goes, and if I can't find that, I know it's not the way down. But um, every once in a while, especially because time was getting late and we weren't even close to being near sundown, but it was just one of those things. I was getting hungry and just I was ready to get back to the car and to get on with the day. So we uh, we eventually made our way back down to there was a very clear down earlier um, on the path. So we found our way back to that and then made our way down and back back home. It's a good lesson, though, because sometimes we have these detours and sometimes we have these opportunities to make decisions about the what best way forward. And there was a point where my husband found kind of a down, kind of, kind of, if I were like 25 and fearless, probably I could have made it. And I'm not, I'm not a, a spooky climber at all. I'm, I'm quite good on my feet. I'm kind of like a little mountain goat up there. So I just looked at it and I was like, oof. 
there was just a part that looked like it was a little bit too sketchy for me. And I just said, I said, no, I don't want to do it. And he listened and we turned around and went back down. Why am I sharing this with you? Well, this week, you may find some things in your life where you get detoured, delayed, you lose your flow, you lose your sense of direction, you lose your way down. And what I want you to remember if that happens, which it, you know, if not this week, it will inevitably happen at some point, you'll lose your true north. What I want you to remember is something that I always dial into when I'm hiking, especially is that there's always a way down. We're never actually lost. And, you know, on the mountainside, the truth is that if we absolutely needed to, we could probably call a helicopter to come in and get us. I don't ever want to have that experience. But that's like in the back of my mind, like the worst case scenario. So you can always call somebody in. There's an expense associated with that, though. So and not that I want to do that and, and not that I, I think that we'll ever have to. But I, it's just a psychological strategy that I use to keep myself calm, cool and collected when I kind of lose my way, when I'm not sure where I'm meant to go next. And so when you encounter those moments this week where you feel a little bit frazzled or a little bit out of sorts or a little bit distracted from what your purpose is, what I want to encourage you to do is just to take a couple minutes and anchor back in. Because the truth, of, the truth is this week, the winds of change are swirling. There's a lot of activity going on energetically, emotionally, psychologically, there's just a lot going on. And the people who are leading well are the ones who continue to anchor themselves into not who the world says that they are, not what the world says that we ought to be doing with our time, with our energy, with our intentions, but instead they anchor into what their heart's desires are and what they know for sure internally. So they use the internal compass first. And I'm, you know, when I do these weather reports, I also energetically transmit information that's not actually, I'm not able to actually articulate, but I'm sending it to you. Just that real strong, focused, anchored feeling that you get when you really come into contact with your consciousness, with yourself. So this will be very helpful for you, whether you're going on vacation because it's spring break and you've got kiddos or you're back at work and you're working on some projects that uh, may be high priority, but there's not a big intensity to them. Just anchor back in to what you know for sure. Anchor back into your heart, anchor back into the truth of who you are and what you know for sure. That way, even as the winds of change are swirling, you're not calibrating to something outside of yourself. Instead, you're calibrating to your highest level of consciousness, your divine and eternal self. You're anchoring back into your creativity, to your capacity to innovate, to your capacity to lead first and foremost yourself. And then I want to end as we're kind of closing for today. I want to just share a little story with you. We have our almost year old golden doodle puppy named Cooper. And he is now pretty close to full grown. He's probably around 65 pounds of muscle and energy and testosterone. So I just want to give you a little sense of who I'm dealing with here. This morning I took him out for a walk and the wind was blowing. Oh my gosh. It was blowing. So not so hard, but it was just, there was a lot of activity, a, little, a lot of wind activity in the neighborhood and he chases leaves. So he's on his leash and he sees a leaf on the other side of the street from me and takes off over there. Well, 65 pounds of muscly testosterone puppy is a lot. So I'm pulling back on his leash, but it was, it, I'm sure I looked a little bit like I was water skiing across the, across the road as I followed him. What I realized though, when it comes to wind, wind, wind is actually metaphorically related to thoughts, to your thinking. 
So if you've ever had a hurricane or a tornado dream, chances are you've had a lot of anxious thoughts or a lot of worried thoughts that have been spinning around in your mind during the day that, that uh, manifest in your dream state as tornadoes or hurricanes. But even in your waking state, you can look at how are my thoughts like the wind? And what I noticed I was doing this morning with Cooper is that I, as an emotionally intelligent being, you see this look on my face. Remember, Robin, you're an emotionally intelligent being. I, out of habit, had made an unconscious choice to calibrate to my puppy's energy. So I noticed as he was chasing and grabbing and pulling and tugging and kind of nutty in the street this morning, I noticed my energy becoming more and more ungrounded, more and more frustrated, more and more intense, more and more anxious. And I remembered something, thank goodness, and that was that I'm a leader and my dog is meant to calibrate to my energy. I'm not meant to calibrate to his. So when I calmed my thoughts and I refocused my energy and tension on my heart, on my heartbeat, on my breath, bringing myself into the present moment and cooling out my own nervous system, bringing it out of red zone and into blue zone, more calm, more poised, more focused. Guess what happened with Cooper? Same. And I literally set the intention that Cooper's heart and his brain were going to calibrate to my heart and to my brain. And we know from the research from HeartMath Institute that when two beings' hearts are in the same proximity, I think it's about five feet apart or so, the hearts actually calibrate to each other. They become in sync. The variability becomes in sync. And so knowing that and then setting the clear intention that that's exactly what I was doing with Cooper shifted everything this morning. Now he's in the other room sitting in my husband's office. Actually, he's probably not sitting at this point. He's probably sleeping at this point, a very different energy than what we woke up to this morning. So I wanted to share that with you because I want you to just think about today and this week because the winds of change are swirling and because there are so many opportunities for distraction and for, for our energy, our visions to be distorted by what's going on in the world. There's Cooper. Did you hear him? He woke up. He heard me talking about him. But those distractions actually create the conditions for us to feel pretty ungrounded and apart from our bodies. So I just want to invite you to just come back into yourself. Notice your breathing, notice your heartbeat, set the intention that you're going to calibrate yourself first. You're going to anchor yourself into what you know for sure. And stay true to that. So that you can just very gently rise above everything that's not a match for what you know for sure. That's my two cents today about the weather report. I hope you enjoyed this episode of our weather report for the actualization zone. Leave, a, leave your comments below and let me know what you're taking away from it. And um, let's have a good week this week. I'll see you soon.